even with the sub of arc, seeing him for the first time, seems like they're still playing this one seriously. They're going for the 4-0. Yeah, you know, this is the only way you go home together as the Outlaws tonight without a bad taste in your mouth, I think, is if you're able to take what I believe is their third map on Route 66, historically. It's been a lot of maps played for them, and it's just been, you know, they've missed the boat with it. As you can see, uh, the last two maps, they've barely died. So, I mean, this is what uh, this, this series has looked like. Unfortunately, it's a rough one for the Outlaws fans. But it's not poor performance from them, but it's New York Excelsior's extremely calculated style that has really been giving them trouble. Libero will once again start to look for a Zen pick, potentially, and then swap back over to the Brigida. Not going to find it. Mecco still on the Sombra, at least for now, but actually, Okay. Might have been a missed translocator there. Not too certain what happened. It's, I mean, he's reasonably going to swap as well, potentially. A uh, <laughs> few extra seconds being handed over, I suppose, to the Houston Outlaws for their defense. Maybe we'll get a, a look at what the heck happened, because he is sticking with the Sombra. Yeah. Works his way into the back line. Gonna find Raucus, has to translocate back instantly, so he gets tagged up. What's really cool about Libero swapping over to Widow, too, is he was just trying to hit those high ground members. Didn't get any kills, but it's when you're this close to spawn, it's a good idea. You could swap relatively easily. Spree going low. You know, they are finally going to start to make some ground here. Oh, well, as you say that, though, Boink going to be taken down, Mane. Looking to open things with that first kill. Ark will get punished on exchange on the Lucios, but Dante is well going to be eliminated. And Muma doesn't have enough backup here to stay alive. Will get taken down. The cart will finally start advancing. And there was a very scrappy start to this round of Route 66. The outlaws delay a lot here. We're going to take a look at Mecco's death, no oh. doubt. Yep, missed And didn't throw it high enough. Figured. It happens to everybody. Yep. But talking about the Houston Outlaws, they stayed around that fight a lot uh, for a long time and built a lot of ultimates. Jake's actually still ahead in Brigida charge here because Libero swapped so many times. So they can actually take this fight if Dante can finish that EMP, that last 15%. This is a great way for them to hold A and take another minute off the clock. It's going to be the high ground wrap around here for the Houston Outlaws trying to match. Throwing XL push up the ramp. Ramp down surge going to be thrown down. Just locking up Dante. Solo to get rid of him to try to get this completion onto A before the EMP can come through. This is what NYXL is so good at. They identify these win conditions. They say, what's the way that Houston opens this point? It's the Sombra. He spots him, insta single grabs him. And now they respond with an EMP of their own out from Mecco. Looking a lot better than at the start of this round. And the cleanup will come through. Effective team kill as Dante wasn't even able to get back. And that's the moment where you're, you're shaking your fist again to fear the outlaws because they had every ultimate they needed to hold the push. But unfortunately, in some twist of fate, Nene finds Dante and solo grabs him. You almost never see that. But Nene's able to identify in a split second that EMP's their worst enemy in this scenario, and he shuts it down flawlessly. The respawn comes too late. Mecco then has his own EMP. It's brilliant play. Nene pushing his way back, waiting for an opportunity to build up that energy. Houston Outlaws will open things with that grab. A little bit late on the transcendence from Jonek. Unable to save Ark's life. Now Rock is going to be matching, pushing back forward as Mono gets taken down. Houston Outlaws gaining control of this choke. Ark actually is struggling to build that sound barrier throughout this game. He's died quite a few times already. He's three and two at the moment. I shake that rust off. Yeah, I got to shake the rust off for sure. Played a lot of Mercy there at the end of Overwatch League as well. Oh, really aggressive push forward here from the Outlaws. This could come back to bite them in the rear. They can't exit safely. Seems like it's going to be a little bit of percentage handed over to New York, but otherwise unscathed. It's a nice retreat, and it gives Dante the time to build that EMP. So I like this. They basically just bought some time to delay NY's push. Now they have the tools they need to stop it. Well, that's going to be the EMP. Shatter comes in, locks up two, but Jake dangerously low here on the counter grab. Will get taken down now, Muma as well. Boink only able to find Mecco. Nene just picking up kill after kill. And we talked about Outlaws, they lose a choke point. Sure, and when we talked about Ark, you know, having the rust shaken off there, it's certainly no rust in terms of the counter Sombra play. He has the sound barrier right when he needed it there, was not clipped. 
by the EMP, which would, of course, then prevent him from giving that counter barrier coming down. Even though Muma hits the shatter, both ultimates are denied by one. That's ult efficiency in a nutshell. And that's a free push now looking to be as the Houston Outlaws don't have anything but this grab to assault the point with. And Mako nearly has the EMP 15 more percent ready to go. Looking and for Jake. For a hack on the movement. No, it's going to be opening up. Spray on the left click there on a Jake. Trying to get some damage in. And Jonik will actually be the one to finish him off. You can Here clearly on the staircase, just taking some shots, the right clicks. Yeah, you can clearly see Jake was the target oh, cold there. Now the grab comes out really late. Yeah, but Johnny on the spot is Jonic with that transcendence. Keeps some topped up sound barrier from point is not enough for them to survive. Houston Outlaws is gonna get cleaned up here. Point going in for an extra little bit of delay, trying to drain as much time as he can away from NYXL, but they're still up over three minutes as they enter the garage. And yeah, Ark is a, an old NYXL favorite, or rather. I mean, yes, he's still a favorite, but he's hasn't really seen that much play in stage one, like at all. Um, but he's got yep. this pre-existing synergy with this roster. The communication has been good. Only Nene is really the new face here, and he has been charging up energy in, in conjunction with Mono's approaches. It's been honestly something of beauty here while we're watching. Staying safe, Rock is nearly picked off there at the beginning. Grabs on Surge, gonna be coming through, locks up Dante by himself. Armor pack plus the bubbles as he tries to stay alive. Seems like he will be able to do so, now the Shatter comes out. Susan Outlaws take the fight to NYXL. Fire Strike will take down Libero. Seems like that might be the only pickoff they can get unless they get some staggers here at the end. But either way, it's gonna be another one fight for them as they can try to gain control over another choke. Uh, Rock has hit some huge bio grenades to build that incredibly fast. Without that nano boost, there's no way Dante holds that. So really well played here by the Outlaws. Finally stopping the train that is the New York Excelsior. They hold the high ground here. Now just trying to play around the corner, but that's gonna be the push through. New York Excelsior just goes straight through them. Jake gets picked off the back of the rally. Shatter comes in, Rock is gonna be locked down. Fire Strike will climb his life. Three members gone inside of Houston, looking for a little bit more as they go for these staggers. Spree will get popped out. Boink gonna be taken down, and the cart will continue to roll. Almost every one of these fights, the call is clear to go on Jake. He's staying on the low ground. He's trying to stay back, but he's caught, discorded by Jonak, and he's the one who gets picked. New York Excelsior is punishing his forward positioning, and as a result, he's got quite a few deaths here. Now the high ground is taken from the Outlaws. Rally to try to take that away. Yep, grabs on Surge, gonna be locking up. Nene goes to low, but the transcendence is just in time. They need to get rid of that shield. Nene will be taken down by the self-destruct. The rest of NYXL surviving on the back of the sound barrier. But they kite their way back. They push over towards the spawn. They know that they can't go forward without that Zarya. They're just playing it safe. A minute left. Finally, though, there's a real hope that the Outlaws can actually hold this. Nene's got the grab. Boink has the, you know, sound barrier to counter it. They ha also hold this high ground. No one, if someone gets picked here, though, NYXL will totally open it up. Nene's just gonna try to get up here. 60 energy at the moment, not too much. Dante almost just going down right there. Nice retreat. Quiet low. Push around the side. Hart's still gonna be oh, they're caught. Houston he Outlaws, it. they're gonna have to drop down. 30 seconds remaining, can they stop this? Grab comes in straight on a Muma's shield. Bob's up over the top, Muma gonna be gone. Nothing to block this one out, but Dante does have the bubble available. So manages to absorb that and get some nice energy, but is that gonna be enough for them to drag back some kills and stop this card from rolling through? NYXL getting ready to approach OT with 13 seconds remaining on the clock. Rally is out from Libero, armoring up everybody that he can. Take on the side. And a half HP, not gonna be in the transcendence. Joins back in though, and Rockets will keep him topped up. OT getting ready to roll. Just gonna be the transcendence here for Jonak. All that NYXL have to work with. There's a grab, there's a shatter, there's a rally out of the Houston Outlaws. He tries to go in for the shatter, but he gets stunned out of it. Moomin not gonna find anything. Armor's still rolling through, however. Now the transcendence is gonna be in from Jonak. Not gonna have it. They try to heal through this grab without surge. It comes out, locks up three members instantly on the card. All of them gonna be taken down. Houston Outlaws showing some signs of life here right in the final hour. They clean them up, the grab comes in. The transcendence is there. No one is on the card. Jonak is all alone, and they will be able to stop them from advancing all the way through Route 66. You called it out. The early trance comes back to bite the New York Excelsior and Outlaws. Make the grab work from up on high. Still hope for a single map. Yep, just need to try to get that finish on the point. Let's see if they can do it when we come back from the break.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Houston Outlaws, if they can just get a full push here on Route 66, will be able to take a map victory against the NYXL and deny them that much sought after 4-0. In terms of, you know, Brigida stats, Jake is only 200 points behind Libero, and that's very impressive given he had a rough start. And he is actually able to get multiple rallies here at the end, so he's hitting the proper armor targets. You called it out in this fight, you know, the Transcendence just not being available here because Jonak used it just a moment before is what gives Houston this victory. As the high ground is controlled, Spree did a ton of damage there as oh. well. Look at these NYXL strats though, Wolf. It's okay. gonna be the Orisa Bastion with the Widowmaker. Not so much a crossfire in this setup, but still gonna be looking for some success. Very, no pine, though, feels bad. Very greedy. We will also Jake swap over to the Genji, so that's always a treat to see. Just gonna avoid these fire strikes as they come through at range. It's enough time to transform and move. The scariest thing here for the Outlaws is going to be, and the hardest thing as well, is going to be closing the distance. Which, what do we go for? It's the musical chairs. But once they get on top of this Bastion, that's when they can destroy it. They're going to try to halt off. Nice yep. positioning, though, not allowing the Bastion to come down. Problem is, the bubble doesn't last that long, nor does Jake, apparently. Stenic gets that shot, taking him down, now going to be looking. For the enemy supports, gets a body tag there onto Boink, but cannot quite kill him off. There's no diva on the side of the Excelsior, but with, you know, this barrier up here, it's very difficult for the Houston Outlaws to really oh. pull everybody down. Well, they're going for everything they can pull. They've got the, the Hulk hook combo ready to roll. Many going to be dragged out. Jake gets a snipe. Coming back in, gets a little bit of revenge. Now it's going to have to be the repositioning of the Bastion. It's just gonna be right on the corner, but Raucus is going around from the back. Gets the hook in. Arc's taken out, but they lose Jake and Boink. Yeah, Faster it's, respawns, though. It's a small victory here. And he's now just an ult battery. All the damage done to him is gonna build further ult. Speaking of which... That's gonna be Libero hooked in. Taking him lower and lower, but he needs a little bit of follow-up to try to finish him off. Into the corner. We'll be able to have it. Jonik's gonna be eliminated. With the loss of that Mercy, there's no chance of getting the res coming through. Houston Outlaws can finally start this cart rolling through. Raucus getting these great hooks in. Yeah, Raucus at the moment, you know, 75. 75 hook accuracy. Just checking the stat on that one. We will see New York Excelsior swap everything but Mecco because they don't need a D.Va to deal with this composition. They do need to build ultimates defensively here as they use this EMP. There is a way where they could contest A here because the push didn't actually come through quickly enough to deny them that. They have time to respawn. Look at Mecco's positioning. He's at the back. He's looking for that EMP onto the support line. Wink already preemptively oh, Valkyrie. Jake so close. Dante as well. They're right next to each other. EMP's going to be coming in. It catches all six members of the Outlaws. Move out the first one targeted down. Jake does manage to answer back on the Jonak. Storm arrows. Oh, this could be a big one. Strike into the gas station. It's a double kill over to Jake. They get a triple in the end. The Houston Outlaws. Oh, man, they fight fire with fire. And they come out on top for A. They stabilize here. The probably swap heroes is this is the moment where you want to match ultimates with the New York Excelsior. You don't want to try this any further. You don't have the ults you need to utilize the Hanzo there. That was a lucky moment. Everything fell into place for the outlaws as Jake gets an arrow straight into the building. And hey, what do we say about positive energy for these guys if you want them to win, huh? There you go. <laughs> it's not over yet, though. No, it is not, but it's a good start for the Houston Outlaws. Over three minutes for the streets phase. Push forward from NYXL, looking to go aggro. Mono managed to take down Jake. With the help of that rally, just armoring up everyone. Muma going to be hitting the ground. Also eliminated. Nice, clean push forward for NYXL to gain control. Now, this is the drawback of strategies like what the, the Outlaws used. Now, Excelsior has ult advantage because they held these heroes longer, right? The, uh, you know, the... Um, Ryan Zarya. They swapped faster. They won this fight. Now they have control of this choke with ultimates that excel in moments like that. The grab, the EMP. Sleep on the Nene. Bomb up over the top. Can that finish him off? He's not going to stand up in time. They get rid of the Zarya. They get rid of the Lucio. Typically, Monte Cristo says, don't open a fight with a bomb, but when he got the sleep dart to set up onto the Zarya, I think it's pretty acceptable. And it's also an exception to the rule here because he they didn't expect his angle to come through yeah. like that because they were so far forward. 
So he just sees this opportunity that he's going to blindside them with this explosion, and the push continues. It's a decent time bake here for the Outlaws, and they've certainly made up for lost time in terms of those ultimates they were missing in that previous fight. Going out the bio nade to try to force them back. It's going to be the nano in on Damuma, swinging away. Looking for the hit, looking for the pin. Oh, no, just going to be pooping the Reinhardt up into the air, so cannot quite get that kill. Shatter, however, still going to be online. Graviton Surge comes in. Counter grab out from the side. Final gets a fire strike. He's trying to build up. Houston Outlaws continue to inch the card forward. A minute and 40 remaining. Would have a very nice time bank if they can get this finish right here. High ground here for Dante is absolutely massive. He's doing a lot of damage. He does get forced off by Arc, though. Still high energy. He's the one doing most of the damage. And he is, but Muma goes inside, gets taken down. The back end of Jake being eliminated, 100 energy, but he's just looking for something, pushes forward to try to get rid of Jonek, but the bubble comes in from Nene. And, you know, we talk about him being on the high ground and being high energy, but in that moment, New York Excelsior realizes, well, if I stick near him, he's going to do high damage, area of effect damage to our entire squad, so we'll hit the rest of the team that's on the low ground, collapse on them, win that 6v5 fight, and then suddenly Dante's on the high ground alone. Very well played. 61% of an EMP here for Mecco. That EMP may be what makes this a 4-0 series. The Outlaws need to be careful, need to play around it. They don't have Transcendence with no Zenyatta. The wraparound onto the cart, inch it forward even closer, just a couple meters away. Jonak right now unhindered in the back line. Trying to stay in behind Libero. Spamming away nearly with the Transcendence up. Boink, gonna get taken down, Mecco kills him off. That's gonna be the sound barrier gone. Now Jake eliminated Muma. Gonna be cleaned up. One more realistic push for the Outlaws to try to finish here on the B. Count them though. Arc, Jonak, Nene, Mono, Libero, and Mecco. Six ultimates. Can the Outlaws break the records here? Can they win on their worst map? I mean, for the Outlaws, it's like trying to play Russian roulette with six bullets. All cards stacked against them. Boink's sound barrier has to be there if he gets hit. This map is over. Pushing their way in. Here comes the EMP. OT getting ready to tick down. The shield has to come on the back of the EMP to try to keep them alive. Grab top search, gonna be locking them into the wall. The EMP now dumped in. They need the shield, they need it right now. It comes in right in time for the shatter, but they still have the damage to take down Moma. Hack is down on the Jake. He's swinging away like a madman, just trying to stay alive, but it's not gonna be enough. Mono's hammer is bigger than Jake's mace. Bomb out from Spree gets nothing. He'll be denied the remake. Raucus is gone. They will clean them up. It's not a full hold like we saw on Assault on Hollywood, but NYXL still look clean in the finish. A 4-0 victory over the Houston Outlaws. They may have gotten the sound barrier to block the EMP, but there's a follow-up shadow. There's a follow-up grab. There's just too many ultimates, too efficient. Were the Excelsior there on the defense? Mono and Mecco, this tank duo continues to just absolutely decimate whatever team they run into. It's very systematic to see how they control the choke points with those ultimates, with Mono on the Winston. Bubbles coming through. High energy Zarya from Nene. If you're an Outlaws fan, don't be disappointed with your team, but be terrified of the New York Excelsior. Well, fantastically done from them. Outlaws, I think there's still a lot to be to feel good about here despite the score reading otherwise. They did show some very strong moments here. NYXL, just a very tough opponent for them to try and take down. We've seen improvements from the squad already. With a bit more time, I think that they are going to be able to uh, kind of show some better results here as we go deeper into stage one, into this, the entire year overall for 2019 season. Certainly, you know, the Outlaws have shown us so much so much diversity in strategy, and I think that their synergy is clearly there. It's just going to be a little bit more ironing out the wrinkles. Yep, we'll see how they piece things together when we look at them for their next series next week. But guys, let's go ahead and throw down to Danny Lim on the floor, who is standing by with a certain tank duo. Thank you guys so much. I am here with Mecco and Mono from NYXL. Please, Arena, make some noise. Now, Mikko Mano, you guys are showing off some amazing synergy. Your combos, your Ryan and your Diva combos are, I would say, top notch. Like, how are you guys able to keep this, uh, you know, pull off these combos so perfectly, so precisely? Uh, how to do it, 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 how to do it,
So in, in any given situation, in game, I feel like we just kind of get it. We just kind of know what each other are thinking, and that's how we're able to pull off these amazing combos. All right, cool, thank you. Next question, this one is for Mecco. Um, you know, NYXL currently is the only team that has four... Me oh, Mono, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. Mono. And you guys are the only team that has the 4-0 victory right now. Um, basically, how are you guys able to just play so consistently and so good? Oh... Uh... 모든 선수가 열심히 하고 잘하는 것도 있겠지만 이제 안 보이는 곳에서 코치님들이랑 스태프분들이 그 밤낮 안 가리고 열심히 하는 게큰 도움이 되는 것 같아요. It's, I feel like uh, the players are also uh, always giving their best, but also behind the scenes there's the staff co staffs and the coaches that are uh, working day and night consistently for our team, and that's why we're able to be so good. All right, thank you guys. That was it from me. Let's head back to the casters. Thank you very much, Danny.